Hello everyone. In this series, we are covering the most commonly asked Java technical interview questions. And the coding task that we are covering in this video is the maximum and minimum numbers of array. So in this coding task, you are required to write a program that can identify the largest and smallest numbers that is presented in the array of integers. Okay, And the solution that you provide you should be able to handle the arrays of the uh, different size and considering the negative numbers as well as the positive numbers if presented. Okay. For example, if this is the given array which contains some negative numbers and positive numbers, at the end, your solution it should give you this output. The maximum number is 20 and minimum number is negative 4. And the solution that you provide it should also work with the array of different size. Doesn't matter if there are 10 elements or 20 elements, it should give you the maximum and minimum numbers at the end. Okay. So here what we can do is first we can uh, we can complete the approach for finding the maximum number and by and then we can easily change the condition to find the minimum number afterwards. Okay. So let's start with finding the maximum number. I'm I'm going to declare a variable called max at the beginning just to be able to store the maximum number uh, at the end. The whole purpose of having this variable is to contain the maximum number of the array. And at the beginning, I will assign the very first element of this array. This is the first assumption that we are going to make, assuming that the first element is the maximum number. But of course, I still have to compare it with the remaining elements of the array. Okay, And whenever there is an element that is even greater than this element, then it will replace this element as the maximum number. Okay, So which means next step, I need to get every single element of this array. To get every single element of this array, this time I can use for each loop because I just need to get the elements. I don't have to access to the index numbers. Okay. So when you apply the for each loop, on the right side of the column, you will give your array. And on the left side, you give you declare your variable each. So I do have each element of this array now. Okay. And uh, next step, what I'm going to do is each element of this array, I will compare it with the current maximum number. Whenever there is an element in the array that is greater than the current maximum number, then this element it should replace the current maximum number. So this is my if condition. If the elements of the array, this each is representing the elements of the array. If there is elements in the array that is greater than the current maximum number, the current maximum number is stored into this variable max. Whenever this condition becomes true, that means there is an element in the array that is greater. This each is representing the element of the array. So if there is an element that is greater, then this element it should be assigned to the variable max. So max will be reassigned in that case. Okay. And then after this loop is completed, the last value that is assigned to the max will be the maximum value of this array. For example, after this loop is completed, let's print out the maximum number. Maximum number is, and let me concate the variable max afterwards. Let's see if it's going to give us the maximum number. See, it says that the maximum number is 20. Here is how we ended up getting 20, okay? So at the beginning, we assigned this first value as the maximum number, 10, okay? Before the loop, the maximum value was set to 10. The first element of the array was set to this max value. And when the loop gets executed, with, uh, when the loop gets executed, whenever this condition becomes true, then max is going to change. The value of the max will be changed. Okay, which means uh, when the loop first executed, it's going to compare those numbers first. Since those numbers, uh, uh, since this ten is not greater than ten, ten will still stays as the maximum number. And when the loop executed for the second time, the second element, which is five. 5 will be compared with current maximum number, which is 10. If 5 is greater than 10, then 5 will be assigned. Otherwise, 10 stays as the maximum number. Okay. 
So the only time that this maximum number, this 10 will be replaced is whenever there is a number that is actually greater than the current maximum number. So when the loop executed for the fourth time, the value, the value of each will be 20, okay? 20 is greater than the current maximum number, 10. Which then what happens is that 20 will be assigned to the max. So now the maximum number during the first execution of the loop is 20. And then when the loop executed for the last time, for the, during the fifth execution, the value of each is 15. 15, it is not going to be greater than the current maximum value, which is 20. So therefore, 20 will stay as the maximum number. So basically, the meaning of this condition is whenever there is a number in the array that is greater than the current maximum number, then that number should be assigned to the maximum number and reported as the maximum value of the array. Okay, so this loop is going to repeat this statement till the last element of the array, which means every single element will be compared one by one. Only the maximum number at the end will be assigned to the variable max. That's how we ended up getting the maximum number. Okay, and the approach for finding the minimum number, it is also same with the uh, approach of finding the maximum number. Only the condition has to be changed. Instead of greater, uh, looking for the largest one, this time we need to look for the smallest one, okay? So I'm, st uh, I'm still going to declare the variable min, and I will assign the first element of the array as the minimum number. This is just assumption. It's not the final value yet, okay? And then inside the loop, after I get each of the element, I will compare if there is an element that is even smaller than the current minimum number which means this is the condition that I can create. If there is an element in the array, each is representing the element of the array. If the element of the array is even smaller than the current minimum number. If this condition is true, then the, the minimum number should be reassigned by whichever number that is even smaller than the current minimum number. Okay. So we have two different if conditions here. One, the first if condition is for finding the maximum number, and second if condition is for finding the minimum number, okay? When it comes to finding the minimum number, we, you need to look for the ones that is smaller, okay? And when it comes to finding the maximum number, you will look for the element of the array that is larger. So at the end, the uh, minimum and maximum, those values will be assigned to max and min those two variables. And then after the loop is executed, after those conditions are checked for every single element, the last element that are being assigned to those two variables will be the maximum and minimum numbers. And then I can print the minimum number afterwards. So here in this given array, maximum number is 20 and minimum number is negative 4. Let's also add some additional data into, uh, into this array to see if it is going to give us uh, what, what we expected. So this time, in my expected result, I should be seeing 100 as the maximum and negative 19 as the minimum numbers. Let's see if, if it's also going to, what, to be the number that we are getting. So we are getting the same output as the expected one. Okay, so therefore, this is the approach for finding the maximum and minimum numbers, okay? Of course, there could be some different approaches as well for finding the maximum and minimum numbers. Uh, and there are also some other ways of completing the task, such as sorting the array. But usually in the interviews, uh, using the sort method would not be allowed because the interviewer wants to know your problem solving skills, wants to know what lo what's your logic for completing this task. So they wouldn't allow you to use those ready methods, okay? So feel free to leave any comments if you have any questions regarding this approach that we have. Uh, if you have any questions of, uh, regarding any of those lines of codes that we have, I will check the comment section and I will check the comments and I will reply to your comment as well. Please hit the like button if you found this video helpful and consider to subscribe to our channel if you would like to stay connected. Also, let me know in the comment section on which Java technical interview question you want me to cover next. Thank you so much. See you all in the next video.